Y'all are probably going to think I'm crazy for saying this, but despite how the Baltimore Ravens lost to the Kansas City Chiefs in heartbreaking fashion, we always talk about how football is a game of inches. Well, it literally was uh despite this not being lamar jackson's best game despite a lot of penalties by the baltimore ravens despite them not really getting derrick henry going despite the offensive line being a makeshift despite so many bad plays and missed plays and missed opportunities bad penalties despite all of that from the baltimore ravens tonight as well as taking a loss I actually feel really good about this team. Team, keep it clean. I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watch between the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Ravens fell to the Chiefs 27-20 to in a crazy, close, tight, but a really, really, really good game. Uh, and got to give you credit to the Chiefs. Got to give credit to the Chiefs. Um, this was not Ravens' best game all around. It was not their best coach game. It was not their best executed game. But despite everything, they were right there in it till the very, very end. Lamar Jackson in this game, uh, we'll look at his numbers. He went 26 for 41, 273 yards, average 6.7 yards uh, per throw. Had a touchdown, no interceptions. Only took one sack. Also did have that fumble uh, that he lost Ran 16 times for 122 yards and averaged 7.6 6 yards per carry. Lamar Jackson, tonight was one of those games where it felt like really from jump, from early on, Lamar was like, look, however we got to get it, we're going to get it. And that's what I've been wanting to see from him, especially against the Kansas City Chiefs, but really just in the playoffs. This game, in my opinion, and I know this phrase gets thrown around a little too often, a little too much, but this was one of those games that actually qualified for that. It felt like a playoff atmosphere. It really, really did. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens were heading into Arrowhead Stadium to take on them Kansas City Chiefs, and this game lived up to all the hype that it was getting, to all the excitement that it had been being talked about it, it lived up to everything and even more we obviously wish it would have went a different way but just because it didn't go the way that I actually expected it to because y'all know I've been saying all week the Ravens are gonna win this game even though it didn't go that way this did not make me feel like I should doubt the Ravens this year this did not make me feel like oh Ravens season is over they're not gonna be no not at all quite the contrary I actually felt like this game it really showed me like all right Ravens you just got to clean up some stuff, man. You got to clean up some stuff here and there, and you are going to be just fine. Something that a lot of people forget about, including myself, because I forgot about it. It was actually a couple of people that brought it up in the live stream, is that the Baltimore Ravens starting offense, they ain't playing the preseason. A lot of Baltimore Ravens starting defense, they ain't playing the preseason. And I do not have a problem with John Harbaugh not playing the starters in the preseason. That's actually my preference. I'm like, nope, don't need the starters playing in the preseason. Don't want it because I would just hate. I, would, I don't even want to talk about it, but y'all know where I'm going with that. So I ain't had no problem with that. So this was essentially a preseason game for the starters. Not technically, but you get what I'm saying because this was their first time all playing together. All of it. it was their first time playing together. So it's going to take some time for things to get rolling. Something that we've talked about all offseason. A lot of y'all talked about it. We talked about it. And it was an issue. It was an offensive line. It was an offensive line. And what's crazy is that we watched the offensive line. Not the starters. There were some starters like Voorhees was there. Filele played too. But we watched the offensive line in the preseason, and they struggled with uh, run blocking. Oh, they struggled so bad with run blocking. Pass blocking was it was so-so, but run blocking was a big issue. It was like the same thing happened tonight. <laughs> it was the same exact thing. But these were the starters. With Lamar Jackson, he, throughout the night, um, he did not have much time at all. There were some, some instances where he did have more time, but a lot of tonight he was just running for his life. He really was. It was sad to see, but Lamar was like, look, I ain't going to let that stop me. I'm going to be me. I, I absolutely love that. I love that so much, and I want to see that Lamar Jackson all through regular season. I want to see that Lamar Jackson all through the playoffs, all the way to and through the Super Bowl. That's the Lamar Jackson that can get it done. And he wasn't even his best tonight. That's the thing about it. He wasn't even his best. Now, 
Um, him getting all those carries, I don't necessarily mind it, but I wish it wasn't because he had to take off for his life. Well, Lamar Jackson, one thing that I saw about him, a couple of things that we noticed from him tonight is that one, them check downs, he was taking all of them. He was taking all of them. He was doing a great job of taking what the Kansas City Chiefs were giving to him. He was doing a phenomenal job of that. I love that. He was making quick decisions through the air, but also on the ground, too. Because Lamar Jackson, he would drop back. Pressure would come in. That's what we saw pretty much all night. But he would drop back. The pressure would get. He said, oh, pressure. Okay, you know what? I'm out of here. Bye. See you later. I'm out. He would do that just about every time. Every time. Cause he kept getting pressure like just about every time, but um Lamar Jackson uh there were, now the plays that he missed because he missed uh Zay Flowers going deep down the uh, the sideline uh, he threw it a little bit short um there was another play that he missed where to Isaiah Likely another deep pass where he threw it a little bit too far both low percentage plays but then there were also um a couple more plays that he missed I know the one right before Isaiah Likely's game of inches the foot the Kevin Durant play right before that uh Zay Flowers um Zay Flowers he he ran to the the back of the end zone and Lamar he was getting pressured of course like I told you it was all night but um he threw it across his body but I think he thought Zay was gonna stop or Zay thought he was gonna keep running there was some miscommunication but Obviously, they, 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 they missed out on that play. But Lamar said that that play wasn't even for Zay Flowers. He said it was for Rashad Bateman. So there's that. So there was big miscommunication there. Um, also, uh, with Lamar Jackson, now he did. There were some plays that he did make that were really, really nice. Uh, at the end of the game, because Lamar showed that clutch factor, man. He showed the clutch. One thing I really appreciated was Rashad Bateman. Rashad Bateman's number did not get called very often tonight. And he had two penalties, but he had two very, very nice catches. Both in the second half. One was in the third quarter, I believe, and the other was in the fourth quarter on the Baltimore Ravens' very last drive. With Rashad Bateman, we've seen it a lot of times when him and Lamar Jackson, they don't have the best chemistry. And I think they still got some work to do for sure. But one thing I definitely appreciated about Rashad Bateman tonight, when his number was called, he picked up. Because a lot of times you could be going through the game and then if you ain't getting the ball, you're not getting passes thrown your way. You could almost feel like you're just going through the motions. But Rashad Bateman did not just go through the motions and he was ready and available and he made the play when his number was called. I loved it. We want to see him get more involved moving forward, get him more involved in the future. But again, it's a work in progress. But tonight it was, I can't say it was the best start, but for when, again, when he was called upon, he took care of business. So I guess I guess I say that was a good start then. I say that was a good start, but we would like to see some more of Rashad Bateman. A lot of times it felt like this offense, um, it was Zay Flowers or Bus when it came to the wide receivers. And I still, I still feel like the Baltimore Ravens should make a move at the wide receiver position, but another conversation for another. I know it's just been one game, but I, I felt like this even before this game. Um, just to get somebody dominant to get somebody really like that just to help open things up that much more. Um, another play that Lamar Jackson made, again, under pressure. <laughs> he had to run for his life again. But it was a touchdown pass to Isaiah Likely. Oh, my goodness. Lamar Jackson ran for his life, threw it up to Isaiah Likely. Um, not necessarily a back shoulder throw, but Isaiah Likely had to come back. He, he came back and got it. The defender was turned around, so Lamar was able to put it somewhere where only Isaiah Likely could see it. So Isaiah Likely came back and caught the ball. Made a defender miss, ran, 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 took off, stopped, and he did to Lamar because that last defender, whoa, he, he went flying out of bounds. He looked like Superman. And Isaiah Likely just watched him, walked into the end zone. Oh, my goodness, it was so beautiful. And Isaiah Likely, he is showing, and this game showed, Isaiah Likely is tight in one. Isaiah Likely is tight in one for the Baltimore Ravens. We talked about last year when Mark Andrews was out, that if Isaiah Likely had an opportunity to be a starter at tight end, he would definitely be a top five tight end. No doubt in my mind, no questions at all. Isaiah Likely will be a top five tight end for sure. He showed his stuff tonight. He really did. And oh, he came so close to getting the second touchdown. And that would have been such a play right there. But shout out to Isaiah Likely. Shout out to him. He's ready. He, and I love how he picked right up where he left off at last year. Now, I do think Mark Andrews is still dealing with some type 
of injury. I know he, of course, got into the, the car accident, had the injury that he got last year. So he's still dealing with something. So he's not all the way back yet because he was on the sideline a lot. But Isaiah Likely, he's tight end one. And it's so important that the Baltimore Ravens do not try to fix something that's not broken. Isaiah Likely being a feature of this offense, it's not broken. Keep him, keep him just like that. Just like that. Because Isaiah Likely, he shows he can catch. He can move. He can move after the catch. He gets the yak. But he also is a good physical blocker. That man, he saw that block that he put on. Um, was it George Karloftis or was it number 54? I forgot which linebacker the, the Chiefs it was, but he sent him flying. I said, okay, Likely. There we go. But Isaiah Likely, the thing I liked about it is that they kept him involved throughout the game. It wasn't just like, all right, first quarter year. It wasn't all right, just the second quarter, but throughout the entire game, Isaiah Likely kept being involved over and over and over. Somebody else who was involved a lot, uh, Zay Flowers. And Zay Flowers, a lot of what happened last year was Zay Flowers was involved in the run, uh, the running game and involved in the passing game too. Rushes, uh, he had two carries for 14 yards, but then uh, catches, he had six catches for 37 yards. Um, had plenty of targets, plenty of opportunities. Um, there were some that him and Lamar did not connect on, like, of course, that deep ball. There were some screen plays, too. Uh, one way Lamar threw it a little bit too, too far ahead of him, but Zay Flowers, obviously, he's going to be a big part of the Baltimore Ravens game plan. He is their wide receiver one. But, again, like we talked about, Ravens got to find ways to get other people involved. Um, the Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. Uh, he had 13 carries for 46 yards, averaged three and a half yards per carry, and had that one touchdown. His longest run of the night was nine yards. Now with him, um, he's somebody. 15 carries, that ain't, oh, no, 13 carries, excuse me. That ain't going to be enough for him. That ain't going to be enough for him to really get going. Derrick Henry's somebody that you got to feed and feed and feed and feed and feed. And, of course, every game is different situationally. Not every game is the same. So we got to take that into account. But with him, and again, this, this game, like, obviously Derrick Henry didn't go off. But that was, in my opinion, that was not the reason that the Baltimore Ravens lost this game. Um, so Derrick Henry, he'll be fine. And there will be games where he does better because I think everything starts with the offensive line. Everything starts there. The fumble by Lamar Jackson. The offensive line just gave it up. They gave up everything. <laughs> Oh, they gave up. It was, it was a rough night, man. It was a rough night. And this offensive line, again, is still a makeshift offensive line. They had Falele out there. They had Makari out there. Then they had Roger Rosengarten out there. They were doing musical chairs on that right side of the offensive line, so they're still trying to get some stuff figured out. Now, me, I'm not a big fan of a rotating offensive line because I believe that you got to get your guys to jail, especially the offensive linemen, because they're literally next to each other every single play. With wide receivers, they could be over here. They could be over there. They might be over here together. They might be over here together. They might be separate. But offensive linemen, literally right next to each other every single play. Ronnie Stanley. Tonight was crazy. Tonight was weird. Um, a lot of people thought that there could be some funny business going on um, because Ronnie Stanley was getting called for an insane amount of, uh, what was it, illegal formation, I believe. Um, this came from Jess Rebick. He said that Ronnie Stanley felt like he, the refs were trying to make an example out of him with illegal formation. Said it was not called the way the team was told it would be called when the pro refs were at training camp practices. So there was a little bait and switch right there. Uh, he also said Stanley said he was looking at how the Chiefs tackles were lining up and he couldn't understand why Ravens were getting called and Kansas City wasn't. And he was calling for some accountability with the referees. There was also an instance where, um, where, oh, how coordinators, they can't call timeouts. But Steve Spagnolo, the Chiefs defensive coordinator, he called a timeout and the ref said, okay, cool. That's, that's fine. You got it. You got it. It's all good, baby. Like, what? Oh. Okay, all right. I mean, the Chiefs, they can get away with some stuff sometimes. It is what it is. That wasn't the only reason why the Ravens lost. It helped, but it wasn't the end-all, be-all. But it is frustrating nonetheless because you, you hate thinking about stuff like that. You want to see a game get called right down the middle. You just want to see stuff be uh, fair, so to speak. We know there's a such thing as home field advantage, but, yeah. Anyway, we, we'll talk about something else. Um, with the Baltimore Ravens defense, let, 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 let's get to the defense. 
they were up and down. And again, this was Zach Orr's very first game. And for his very first game to be going against Patrick Mahomes in that Chiefs offense, that is a tough task. The first half, he delivered. The second half, he did enough. It wasn't the best, but it certainly wasn't the worst. There was Xavier Worthy. He, first round pick. Chief, hey, Chiefs going to do it, man. They're going to do it. They're going to make a playmaker out of anybody who they choose to. Uh, that's exactly what Xavier Worthy was tonight. Uh, his first touchdown was on the end around, um, or on that Chiefs first drive, and then his second touchdown, wide open touchdown. He didn't even have to do no work. He just had to walk up, walk past Marlon Humphrey, and then catch the ball, walk to the end zone because he was wide open. I know a lot of people blame Marlon Humphrey on that. Uh, I disagree. Uh, Marlon Humphrey, he, he looked like they were playing zone, and he was just playing underneath. Uh, because the the way that he was looking, the way that he was playing, he was not in no man coverage against um, Xavier Worthy. No way. And then when he looked back, it looked like he, he thought that Eddie Jackson was going to be over top of him. But Eddie Jackson, was, he, was, he was somewhere else, man. He was somewhere else. Uh, and Xavier, easy touchdown. Easy touchdown. Uh, Rasheed Rice. Like, he ain't even supposed to be playing. But anyway, he went off against the Ravens. Had over 100 yards. Um, he just... First quarter was going crazy. Second quarter was going crazy. Third quarter, he was doing his thing still. Fourth quarter, Ravens finally stopped. Started stopping him. Finally started stopping him. And we ain't hear from him again, I don't think. Um, but he overall, he did his thing in this game. Um, Patrick Mahomes. This was a game where Patrick Mahomes wasn't his prettiest game at all. Uh, he threw one touchdown, but he also threw uh, an interception. Uh, shout out to Roquan Smith. Roquan Smith in this game. He was definitely feeling some type of way. He was very upset. It really did seem like the Chiefs were in his head. And apparently he had something to say to uh, number 88 for the Chiefs. I'm not sure what happened with that. But um, Roquan Smith was very, like, he was heated this game. He was really, really, really mad this game. Um, and he showed it. He showed it. There was a play where I thought, I'm like, Roquan, why would you do that? I thought that he hit Patrick Mahomes late out of bounds, but Patrick Mahomes just slipped it almost like Roquan was trying to catch him or lift him up or something like that. But, um, yeah, Roquan Smith, this was an up-and-down game for him. Um, really, the whole Ravens defense but uh, as, a, as a unit, but um, for him it was an up-and-down game. For Malik Harrison, oof, this was not his best game. Uh, but I, I think that's more on Zach Orr. For putting him in those positions and and pass coverage is just that's not his thing. Trent Simpson in pass coverage, oh okay now, but Malik Harrison this was not his best game for pass coverage. Uh, so again, it's all it's all about putting your players in position for them to have success. Nate Wiggins, um, I didn't notice him in this guy. I thought he was like all on and off the field. Uh, early on, I saw Jalen Armand Davis out there, like literally from jump. I said, oh okay. They real, I knew they thought highly of Jalen Armand Davis. I know they thought that highly of him. Like, for him to be out there over Nate Wiggins, I said, oh, okay. I was surprised by that. Um, but, yeah, uh, Matt Abike, oh, man, the penalties. Ravens, they had the Chiefs at second and 20, and it was – they had just forced an incompletion. So, I was getting ready to be third and 20. Like, it's like third and 20. Come on, he can't get at it. Well, you can, but it's about to be third and 20. And the penalty – Roughing the pass, so they got caught on just a matter BK. Oh, it was tough, but it was that's what the call was. You can't you can't hit the quarterbacks in the helmet, and it's it's a soft call, it's a weak call, but you got to know like it's tough going against certain quarterbacks. It's tough, but going against certain quarterbacks, it's tougher for reasons that y'all obviously know. And Patrick Mahomes is definitely one of those quarterbacks where it's tougher to go against because he's a great quarterback. He is an amazing quarterback. But the refs, he is one of those quarterbacks that the refs, they will protect. Why? Because that's, that's the money. That's the NFL right there. That's, that's a big money maker for the league. So they're going to do a little extra to send a message to the rest of the league. Like, hey, yo, you better not touch his helmet. Don't touch his face. You better not. But um, penalties just, they were really killing the Ravens um, in this game all, all throughout, man. Uh, Lamar even said it. He said, I feel like whenever they would have a big play, they will end up being a penalty that would wipe it off. And that is what happened a lot of times. Rashad Bateman, he got a holding call. Ronnie Stanley with all those penalties. Um, it was just always Linda Baum, I think they called a holding on him. But I think that was supposed to actually be on Voorhees, I believe. But it was just penalties left and right. Then on the defense, too. On the defense, there were penalties as well. But, again, Ravens, they got a lot to clean up. Uh, but I still, despite them having so much to clean up, I do still feel that this team will be really good. 
uh, and we'll be ready to compete for not just to be a good playoff team, not to just be a contender, but they are a Super Bowl team. Um, now, again, offensive line, that's, it's a work in progress. It is. Offensive line is a work in progress. But this team tonight, the way that they fought back, the way that they didn't panic, the way that they still executed, even though they were down, they were down by 10, and they didn't just be like, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do? Oh, real quick, shout out to Justice Hill. Justice Hill was doing his thing tonight um, for all them catches that he had, had. So shout out to him. I forgot to mention him earlier. He, he, he did his thing. But I was glad that the Ravens, they didn't panic. Execution wasn't the best at all times. Playing wasn't the best at all times. Coaching wasn't the best at all times. Like, I hated that fourth down call. Um, it was like, what, what is that? It's like, that's, that's test the call that you got. For fourth down, that's the one. Uh, but on that second fourth down that they went for it, they they just handed it off to Derrick Henry. They just handed it off to him. And I was like, whoa, oh, okay. I ain't see that coming. And Derrick Henry, he almost got tackled in the backfield. But he made that person miss, and then he ran and got it. I said, okay, there we go, Derrick. But he's going to be straight, man. He's he, he going to be straight. Um, right now, he is on pace to get the amount of touchdowns that I thought he would. I said Derrick Henry could probably gonna get like 17 touchdowns, man. I would not be surprised to get like 17 touchdowns. Um, at least So he got one in the first game He just got to get 16 more at least Hey, but if you want to get more No problem But again, these Baltimore Ravens This game did not shake my confidence In the Baltimore Ravens It did not make me feel like Oh man, these guys They're going to be so bad No, uh-uh I think they are going to be just fine Got to give a special shout out to the newest team, Keep It Clean patrons, uh, my guy Kenneth B and my guy Plex. Appreciate the both of y'all becoming patrons. If any of y'all would like to also do that, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. And if you don't want to, it is A-OK. -okay. But for the team, Keep It Clean patrons, if you got any questions you ever want to send, you ain't got to send me no email. You can send it directly on Patreon. I love y'all. So the first question came from my guy, Kenneth. He said, I ain't Graven been watching you for about four years now. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you, man. Uh, just now decided to become a patron. I, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Uh, but he said, I'm here now, ready to kick off the 2024 season. This was before the game, by the way. He said, I think our offensive line would do just fine. Just need a few weeks to jail together. So, hey, <laughs> yeah, we do need a little bit more time. So we're going to get there. Uh, he also said, I think Zach O will be a great defensive coordinator for us, like you said. Just going to take some time. Uh, really has too much to say on here. Just wanted to know. I'm here now. Been listening to you. Thanks for everything. Hope you and the fam is all right. And congratulations on a new baby girl. Much love and support. Hey, man. I appreciate that so much, man. Thank you. And the next question came from the other newest team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Plex. He said, we going to be all right. I agree. Yeah, I ain't even got to read it, but I agree already. He said, what's up, Engraven? I didn't realize I was no longer a Patreon member. It's okay. He said, it should have auto-renewed, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's all good, man. He said, this game didn't upset me. See, I felt the same way. Like, it, I would have loved if they won. But the fact that they lost. And I ain't no like, oh, hey, we're losers. I'm happy to be losers. I ain't nothing like that now. But... It, it just showed me a lot of things about the Ravens that I was impressed by. Now, I don't like the moral victories, but they're going to be all right. Anyway, he said, um, I've overreacted to game ones in the past, but I've matured. Defense played all right. Can't have Malik out there covering receivers and can't have miscommunications in the secondary. True, true, true. But for one game against the defending champs with the new defensive coordinator, I'm not tripping. I love that. Love it. He said, I can see the potential of the off. Thank you. See, you get it. You get it. Anyway, he said, Lamar looked good. A couple of missed throws, but it's all good. Exactly. Ain't nobody going to hit all of them. Nobody is. Like, but anyway, continue. He says, Zay did his thing. Bateman made clutch plays. I know Henry will get it going later on. That line, though, specifically the right side, they got some work to do. But Chris Jones was lined up over there most of the time, and I can't judge them too harshly. That's a good point that I forgot to talk about earlier. Chris Jones, boy, he was taking advantage of that offensive line, especially on – there was one play where he – was it the, the fumble? I think it was the fumble. Where it was Rosengard. I think it was actually Rosengard's first play. And Chris Jones, he must have saw – oh, that's the rookie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Put me over, over, over on his side. He went over there, boom, straight through, fumble. But anyway, uh, he said, all in all, uh, I would have loved to come out with the win. I don't believe in more of it. Man, you, oh, we, we on the same page, man. We saying all the same stuff. Uh, he said, but I'm excited about the potential of this team, and I lied. I do have a, one, a game one overreaction. Likely is a tight end one. Oh, my. We are saying the exact same things. Literally the exact same things. Everything that we were saying earlier in the postgame, the same stuff. Continuing. He said, and Mark is going to have to move around. That time is coming. I don't know if it's this year or next, but I know that contracts are up at the same time. We're not paying both. I rock with Mark, and I'll root for him when he plays for the L.A. 
Next question came from another team, Keep It Clean patron. Actually, more so a comment. He said, that game was the definition of a nail biter. You ain't lying. He said, no matter the outcome of the game, likely won it hands down. It was a phenomenal game. Well, maybe not feet down, though. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, I'm not going to lie, Engraven. This game really irked my nerves. The early penalties that were so one-sided with the O-line killed us. Uh, and it was absurd that Jawan Taylor false start all game, and it was not being called yeah, he, yeah. Hmm. He said, but this one, to me, it's on Lamar. There were plenty of times where he ran and Mark Andrews was open and he missed a lot of passes. But that leads me to my question. Do you think my guy Andrews could really be on the way out? The connection just wasn't there and he was open. No, not right now. It's, no. You don't, don't make the tight end room weaker when you don't have to. Right now, Isaiah Likely is on an extremely cheap contract. Right now, Mark Andrews is on an expensive contract. Mark Andrews is still good now. And Mark Andrews is going to have his games where he goes off like that. But you don't want to get rid of Mark Andrews just because Isaiah Likely is doing his thing. We remember in this game where Isaiah Likely went out, it was really briefly, he came right back. But where he went out, so you're thinking, okay, well, at least we got Mark Andrews still. So it's nice to have both. Next question came from my guy Derek. He actually sent this during the game. He said, Engraven, I don't know how the game will turn out. I do not know it at all, but I do know Lamar's chemistry with Rashad Bateman is just not there. The offensive line is awful, and the end of Marlon Humphrey in Baltimore is coming sooner than expected. He's declining faster than Chris McAllister and both Jimmy Smith. They were declining in their 30s. This started with Marlon in his mid-20s. I don't know, man. I don't know. I just know Nate Wiggins will be starting soon. I disagree. Again, Marlon, that, that play... To me, that wasn't on Marlon Humphrey. It, 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 it really wasn't. Um, as far as Lamar's chemistry with Bateman, yeah, that, that it's, it still got some work. But again, like we talked about earlier, when Bateman's number was called, he showed up for sure. Um, as far as the offensive line, <laughs> yeah, they, they got some work to do. Well, this question came from my guy, TJ. He actually sent this before the game. I wonder how he feels now. He said, this game tonight can set the tone for us all season long if we beat them at home on banner night. Well... It could have, but again, the game didn't go how we wanted it to, but it wasn't the worst game. It wasn't a bad game. It wasn't the great. It was, anyway, he said, uh, the game can propel our entire season and have everyone afraid of the Ravens. We are to be feared like the Ray Lewis, T. Sizzle, Ed Reed days. We were feared across the league. Let's send a message to the entire league that we them Ravens and not the Chiefs birds for supper. God bless the family, the channel, and the Ravens. Let's go get this ring started tonight. Well, while the Baltimore Ravens did lose tonight, they could still be in the process of getting that ring this year. Expected. Next question came from my guy, Sebastian. He said, I'm not even going to talk about the penalties. These coaches really didn't learn anything. Chiefs were killing us on the ground. Yet we have Marlowe in the slot and Jalen Armour Davis on the field. And the offense felt like we just employed Greg Roman again. And LJ still can't throw flats consistently and deep balls. Also, the running backs all alone gives us the play away for the Chiefs defense. That's something I was thinking about because... That's something that I was a little bit worried about when they signed Derrick Henry uh, was that when they take him off the field, if it was going to be so obvious that it's a passing play. And a lot of times it was. Anyway, continue. He said, uh, that's why I'm 50-50 on that Henry signing LOL. He's not a passing down back. I'd rather have an Aaron Jones or Kamara. And one timeout remaining at seven minutes of the third quarter, 20 seconds left in the clock, and we didn't spike. It's like John Harbaugh never left. Oh, wait, Mike Mack is the only one, is the one that they let go. Now, I get the frustration with the timeouts, but... The Baltimore Ravens did not lose this game because of those early timeouts. They did lose the game. And the early timeouts were like, wait, what's going on? But we're glad that that's not the reason why they lost. Anyway, continuing, he said, what unit was the weakest link in week one for you? Uh, offensive line. Uh, he said, mine is the coaching unit. Just kidding. Uh, he said, O-line for me, especially that right side. Okay, so we're on the same page. Yeah, I said O-line too. Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, what a game. This more of my recap instead of a question. I like what I seen from the defense, but Zach needs to play our first round pick more and use Super Duper Kyle like we used him last season. Yeah, I, I wonder though if with Kyle Hamilton, if they weren't using him like they used him last year because they were just trying to be really conservative with Patrick Mahomes, not like really blitz him like that with Kyle Hamilton. they Yeah, I, I think that's what the case was. But again, that's why I said we can't judge him based off of one game alone. We got to give it some more time. He also said away in a job will look good in my eyes and also T23. Oh, and Travis Jones. Yeah, there was one play where I think Pacheco had almost broken. Travis Jones kept running, running and showed that effort and dove at him and tackled him. I said, okay, TJ. 
It was really, really nice. Last thing with the defense is we need to communicate better because Marlowe saw them saw the running back leaked out and he cheated on him thinking he had help on the back end, which led to that late touchdown. Yes, communication needs to be on point. You are spot on. Lamar needs to work on his throws and spreading the ball around and get others involved. Bateman, cause it can't all be Zay Flowers. Yeah, they do gotta do that for sure. They they got to. Cause like I said earlier, it cannot be Zay or Bust. Uh, O-line was horrible, but I will give them till week three or four to get, get it together. I appreciate that. I think they do, too. I uh, think the refs overdid the illegal formation calls, and if Kelsey's toe was out, they would have called it a touchdown, LOL. Hey, you? You might be right, my friend. You might be right. He said, overall, I'll give this team a B grade. Thoughts? Oh, and last thing, once Harry and Lamar get their connection, I believe so much will open up on the offense. I just think the offensive line. Once the offensive line really gets going, That'll help Derrick Henry out a lot. 